Welcome everyone to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. Joining us today from Thunderhawk Ailments, John Barber and everyone, co-founder. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, Happy to be welcome. Here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Good to have you. You brought you. Uh, some beers with you today. You got some really cool imagery, some really cool names. Thank you. Yeah, three different beers. Um, we have our Toriana Saison, Honey Ginger Saison. Uh, we ferment with a little bit of American Oak, um, Sun Zenner Session IPA. Uh, Citro Mosaic Dry Hopped, and Electric Youth, which is a coffee pale ale. Okay, I'm going to ask about Debbie Gibson later on. Sure. <laughs> First of all, everyone, producer Danielle is here. Yeah. And Paul Segura yes, from the Crosstrust Brewing Company, who apparently will not pay money to hear me sing. Mm. But more on that later. You should pay him money to have to listen to you sing. <laughs> <laughs> That's at the Tommy Howe. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Let's move on and let's try the uh, Toriana Saison that John brought along. And by the way, uh, John may look very, very familiar, as you can tell, in the calendar above thine head. You are Mr. January. I am, the yeah. Sexy Brewers calendar. That's right. Yeah, the uh, What's on Draft uh, Sexy Brewers calendar. I was lucky enough to score uh, a shot in the, cattle, or the calendar. I don't know how. And uh, Mr. January at that matter, too. Yeah. So, pretty Those cool. Abs. Oh, thanks. It's You're just one, one big one formed by beer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Throw S on there, though. So instead of a six-pack, it's like a pony keg. It's like a pony keg, yeah. Oh, you know. right. <laughs> well, I think we're on the same diet. Good deal. Now, I love the name of the beer, Toriana. Obviously, Toriana. Tory Pine. Tory Pine. So this is a, uh, a beer we came up with. Um, everything, everything we brew is actually mm. kind of from our, our home brewing um, legacy uh, recipes we've tuned in. Um, this one in particular, so we it's a Saison brewed with um, orange blossom honey from Mikulich Farms, um, local company here. Uh, some ginger uh, fermented on American oak. Um, and that's a standard. It's one of our staples, like our signatures beers, along with um, electric youth, coffee pale. So if you come into Thunderhawk, um, we should have this on the board nearly every single time. Um, and the, the name Toriana comes from... Um, the specialty version we do with this, so we also do a version with Tory Pines needles. We basically like call it dry hop is probably the best description mm. with Tory Pine needles, um, finished beer, and it kind of adds like a piney, um, resiny characteristic to the finish, um, and actually really smooths out some of the ginger, which is odd to me. Um, but it's it's a beautiful beer, but you know with limited resources of the Tory Pines needles, um, just getting them from a friend's house. Uh, it's it's very limited, so you'll see it again at our uh, anniversary party this year. It's September second. So what are you doing, like crawling up trees and just like picking pine? <laughs> yeah, I get my uh, <laughs> my lumberjack hat on and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> trying to try not to get in any ladder on any ladders or anything. Um, but yeah, you know we put about it's about a, pi a pound, um, half a pound per barrel uh, of pine needles, and it doesn't really take much um, for them to really kind of come through. Mm. Is there Pretty oil in those? Yeah, there's a lot of oil. I mean, you, you can make like pine needle tea and things like that. Um, pine needles in general, I think are a little bit uh, finicky to deal with. You don't want to heat them up too much because you can create turpentine, which is poisonous. So we avoided the hot side completely and just put it in, um, in cold beer, essentially. Hmm. So like Christmas in a glass? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. It's tasty. I'm Cheers really glad you guys did your homework on the pine needle thing. Yeah, definitely. It's something that we thought would be like, we were looking for like, what's like the most San Diego ingredient that Absolutely, we could find. Yeah. Pines. And yeah, they only grow here on the reserve and the golf course and kind of throughout, you know, Del Mar and La Jolla and stuff. And then uh, Santa Rosa Island. Way mm. out in the Channel Islands. Yeah, so. Okay. And being a tree fan, I totally approve of this. Cheers. Cheers. Nice Cheers job. To that. Thank you guys. Yeah. Cheers. This is a good beer. I'm ordinarily a little cool on, on Saison. So sure. Like this. Um, yeah, you know, we keep kind of like the ester profile a little bit more reserved. Um, yeah. It sounds like a very busy beer, you know, ginger, honey, um, oak and whatnot. We try to keep everything, um, I should say complimentary and not overpowered. Harmonious. Yeah, harmonious is a better way. Um, there's a, a brewer in town I really respect. I took this beer to before we opened and I'm describing it to him and his face is like, kind of getting twisted like he wasn't <laughs> excited about drinking this beer really and uh he tried it and he, his comp his comment was beautiful so i was like all right it works we love it um we've made this for a bunch of friends weddings this is kind of like the wedding beer it seems to a lot of craft beer drinkers and people new to craft beer enjoy it as well 
I like that it doesn't have that super funky taste that Saison sometimes have. That like belgian -y, you know, what do you call it? Phenolic. Phenolic, Phenolic that's right. what you yes. call it. Right. Yes, I feel like that it doesn't taste like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a little more muted kind of on like the phenolic aspects, the clove, the bubble gum. It's a little there, but. So do you ferment slightly colder so we that you do. don't get as much ester Yeah, we're phenolic. like around 68, I think, for this. We'll get it started about 70 and then drop it down. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool fermentation. Very cool compared, I think some saisons are in the 90s sometimes, like mm. ramping up. Um, and that's where you get yeah. those big phenolic flavors. Yeah, well, I'll echo whoever that brewer was who said it was excellent because cool. it is, and it is harmonious. Awesome. You get just Thank enough you. of the oak flavor, just enough phenolic, just enough pine kind of in the finish, but, you know, it all works together. Shoot. And uh, you may have noticed that John is sporting um, sort of a, it looks like a, a soccer yeah. jersey shirt. It's our custom soccer jersey we made. So in addition to being a home brewer before you started doing this professionally, right. you also played college soccer. That's right? right, yeah. I played for Santa Clara University up in the Bay Area, um, a little stint with uh, semi-pro uh, team Gauchos down here in San Diego. I think they've since folded, um, but, you know, Soccer's a huge passion for myself and my business partner. We, we played together growing up, um, been to a couple World Cups, and uh, my partner was sending him down to Mexico for the qualifier with Azteca coming up Fun. here. And uh, yes, we, we love it. So if you've, you know, we always play the US soccer games at our spot, try to keep MLS on and stuff like nice. that. So we're really trying to embrace like the soccer culture that we've grown up with, um, kind of integrate that with craft beer um, and, you know, be that be that tasting room. We're willing to be that tasting room that has a TV. We'll have sports <laughs> on and stuff like that. You know, it's to me it goes hand in hand. You know, beer and soccer. It's, can't argue that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just about everybody's got a team. Right, right. 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 And also, uh, now you guys grew up in Allied Gardens, sure. but uh, the location is in Beermar. That's correct. Yeah. So we're in Beermar. Um, we're on Miralani Drive, eight six seven five Miralani Drive, um, across the street from kind of a little mecca of. Uh, different breweries, wineries, and stuff, so. Um, busy area. There. Busy area, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, some people kind of um, assume that we're worried about competition and stuff, and it's something that's always in your mind. You've got to excel and, you know, try to be better than your neighbor quality-wise, but I think we're all trying to be better to our neighbor and that we help everybody out too. And I think that's, you know, Paul can probably preach this. He's been in the game much longer than I have. Um, that's what San Diego beer is really. That's what it's all about. It's all Spirit. about. Yep. And so, you know, in our little neighborhood, um, we're on one side of Miralani on the south side. On the other side of the street, we've got Setting Sun, Saki, Two Kids Brewing, yeah. um, Align Brewing, Protector Brewing, uh, Charlie and Echo Winery, and India Street Winery. And then next door to us, um, Serpentine Cider and Lost Coast Mead are opening pretty soon. So, you know, I really encourage people to come down to Miralani Park or take an Uber up there, get a DD, do a little stroll. You know, you can hit about seven different craft, all independent. Yeah. Uh, businesses and um, lots of different flavors so you know that sounds like a fun day it Seriously. does yeah, yeah. To do that. yeah. yeah. fun day in the 92126 that's right just yeah. uber up there and take a skateboard and then just <laughs> right. exactly yeah. go place Roll to place around. now the next beer we're going to try is your guys' uh, session ipa that's the right sun zenner. sun zenner so this cool is a name. thank you it's a uh, this name i got to give credit to my uh, my brother brian barberin for uh hooking me up with this idea. He found a list of ancient mythological Chinese thunder gods. Good job, Brian. <laughs> yeah. That's completely cool. <laughs> Did some good research and um, just So is cool that where the name, name and the imagery for the brewery itself came from? So the name came from the home brewing days. Uh, my partner Bill and I used to brew in San Carlos and Ocean Beach with some buddies. So we'd always switch brew locations. So our friend's house on NOB was on Bacon and Narragansett, right under the flight path. And um, one night, our buddy Matt, who's just awesome, really eccentric dude, uh, we're standing around the brew kettle, planes roaring over, it's dark, and we can't see anything, and he's just like, all hail the mighty Thunderhawk, <laughs> and we were starting cracking up, thought it was hilarious, it was a joke then, mm -hmm. and I think at the time, you know, myself or Bill was like, that'd be like a cool name for a beer, dude, like someone should name a beer yeah. that, you know, and so it was a joke, and then that joke got told at one of our homebrew parties. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden our friends are starting to call us Thunderhawk and stuff. So that went on for about four years. And then Bill and I wanted a career change. So we're like, let's, you know, let's start a brewery for real. Let's start something small. See if we can actually do this and sell beer. Like our friends and family think we make good beer, but they're gonna tell you that probably no matter what, you know. <laughs> right. Like, thanks mom, I make good beer, thank you. So um, we started uh, looking for names, you know, made a huge list, had Thunderhawk on there. And we're like, you know, after crossing off 200 different names, we're like, this is it, man. It's always been part of us. 
And uh, so, yeah, we use the tagline, all hail the mighty Thunderhawk, just coming out <laughs> That's punching, a rad. You know, with our little tiny one-barrel system, trying to be and bold. And the logo's rad, too. Thank yeah, you, yeah. little totally TH is. within the wings. Yeah, so we wanted, like, a really, like, you know, kind of stampable logo. I mean, we literally have a stamp. All of our growler tags are stamped with it. And uh, it's something, you know, super recognizable, iconic, uh, with a cool, like, color combination, so. Hats, all kinds of sweet swag. And it's not brewing company or brewery, it's ailments. Ailments, so a word we made up. Um, we just, you know, again, trying to stand out in a sea of 140 plus breweries, when, you know, at the time it was probably about 100. Um, just being different, you know, something new. Cheers what ails you. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. All right. Makes us to try this one. The Sun Center Session IPA. What hops went into this one? Citra mosaic on the dry hop, um, bittering. We've got a little bit of um, Columbus and Falconer Seven Seas. I, and a little tiny bit of Maris Otter in there, a little bit of graininess kind of on yeah. the profile. And catch a lot of the hop profile and aromatics on the front end and you know, pretty clean finish, like yeah. non cloying bitterness. So, you know, great summer beer. We have a beautiful patio up at Thunderhawk, like 1,300 square feet. Um, this is what I you know, imagine drinking on the patio this summer. Very tasty. I feel like this Thank is you. a good beer to like start out with because it's not going to totally wreck your palate. You're going right. to like, like whatever you move on to next is, isn't going to stick around right. with you. Right, right. Or you can just like session the hell out of this for, sure. I don't know, hours, right? Yeah. I mean, it's 5.0, so you can drink three or four and still have whatever mental faculties you had prior to that. <laughs> exactly. Well, Things are just a little very more Very jillable. <laughs> very yeah. jillable. Very gluggable. <laughs> Very quaffable. Mm -hmm. What are we missing? Crushable. 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 We haven't <laughs> crushable in a while, actually. <laughs> Jillable just got a, a, an on-air mention the other day, it too. Did. Totally out of context, but it fit. Totally was appropriate. I nice. could drink a lot of this beer. Very tasty. Cheers, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I do get some of the spicy pine grapefruity from, like, the kettle hops. Mm -hmm. And then it finishes with a nice fruitiness from the citron. Blueberries, the, right? Well, <laughs> so we've got this thing. Okay. <laughs> to me, mosaic hops, <laughs> mosaic hops have a little blueberry and mango thing going on in there. I agree, because I don't taste it, but you're not the first person to tell me. Customers have said, I get blueberry, I get like uh, dark fruit, you know, dark berry, and I, I don't taste it at all, but I also. I never discount anybody's palate. Everybody's right. palate's a little different, and you know, depending on kind of what you ate or whatever that day, yeah. you pick up different things. So, you know, I you know, I think beers. Thanks for getting my back, because she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I just say, we taste something, he'll look at me, he's like, I you need a little blueberry, are you getting that? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. No. Like, You're making this up, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm actually getting blueberries. A customer told me my IPA tasted like raisins the other day. Couldn't be farther from the truth, but Did at the same time, I'm like, and it's a guy kind of, mm -hmm talk a lot of crap back and forth with. So I just told him, I was like, dude, you probably brushed your teeth in the parking lot. <laughs> you ate a really bad lunch or something. Like, it's like, you're so, you're so, yeah, maybe so. You're so off on this one. <laughs> well, and then uh, the final beer that you brought along today, uh, this is the Electric Youth Coffee Pale Ale. That's right. So before I make Debbie Gibson jokes, why don't you tell me where the name came from? Uh, that one, you know, I just thought it sounded cool. I'm I had, not like, gonna make fun of Yeah, it. so like coffee, you know, obviously a lot of people drink it to get that buzz, kind of get up, get going in the morning, um, or a little pick me up. So I figured like, you know, kind of in the spirit of coffee, it's like electrifying, youthful, et cetera. So I'm like, electric youth sounds cool. And I swear, as soon as I named it, uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's named after a Debbie Gibson song. So I had to go find out what that was all about. Well, I think Tommy wants to sing that song and I think he's kind of egging me oh, on. Oh, perfect. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you guys have karaoke? Wow. Wow, I don't know the words of that one. Oh. Sure you don't. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Conveniently forgot the lyrics. <laughs> but Bruce Springsteen will be here all day, folks. No, it can be it. done. Right. Cheers, you Cheers. guys. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. The coffee room. Oh, man, Ooh. that smells yeah. great. Wow. Wow. Coffee blocks. Love pouring this beer. Yeah, at the top, it's just flowing, and you're getting hit with this, like, a wave of coffee aroma. So... Beer for breakfast. Wow, this we is do great. Right? Beer yeah, for this breakfast. This is seriously a breakfast beer. This um, is awesome, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's big coffee, like aromatics on the front end, flavor, and again, like pretty clean pale ale finish. Um, it's a really simple, simple beer. Um, we use some Bird Rock coffee roasters. Bird Rock, yes. Yeah, coffee Excellent. in it, and essentially we're, we're dry hopping with coffee in this one, um, just letting it steep 
on um, finished beer, usually about 38 degrees for a couple days. Um, so it's a Perfect. super like gentle extraction, um, mm. you know, really no acidity from the coffee, uh, pretty bright. We use a really, um, really like mild, lightly roasted coffee too, just to kind of complement the pale ale. So when it comes to brewing and you know, you guys are talking about dry hop and when you do, when yeah. you dry hop something, is that where you're getting most of the flavor profile for the beer? Like, cause that's the last thing you put in or? Probably not most of the flavor, but uh -huh. you are getting some flavor, but most, most of all you're getting the aromatic. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you're getting oils and resins and stuff that are in the dry hops themselves imparted into the beer. You're not gonna extract much bitterness, but you will get some flavor from that. In this case, you're getting flavor and aroma right, right. from the coffee. Huge. Mm -hmm. It's Definitely. good. And I think a lot of people forget too how much we taste with our noses as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's so, you know, the nose and the mouth are so complimentary that mm -hmm. when you have those, you know, big dry hop additions or coffee pine needle or whatever, you know, you're smelling it. It almost is like you're tasting it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great Absolutely. beer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we love okay. it. This is like one of our best selling beers, the Electric Youth. Um, so it's always on at your tasting room? Yeah, it's run out. You know, I got to say, we try to keep these staples on all the time, but we're running a one barrel brew house, two barrel fermentation. So, um, you know, our finished product essentially coming out of a, a tank is four kegs and we'll blow through an entire keg, you know, on a Friday or Saturday sometimes. So yeah. we're always playing catch up at Thunderhawk and, you know, knew that getting started, but we really wanted to have like a small, humble start. Um, both of us with no, you know, real brewery production experience. Um, we said, let's do this, you know, small system, get a reputation, kind of create a brand, hone in our recipes and whatnot. And if things go well, uh, we'll look to raise some money and then, you know, go to the bigger system and start getting beer out Well, there. I feel like that makes it a little bit more special also because you don't know when you go to the tasting room what you're going to get. And you want to make sure that, you know, you're not going to sit around and be like, oh, well, like, you know, I'll have that one when I come back next time because it might not be there. Mm -hmm. It's true. And it's it's definitely like, we're walking a tightrope a lot, you know, because there's people who come in for specific beers. Like I have customers that come in to drink Electric Youth like every time, you know, and if it's not there, I'm getting an earful. But that's, you know, oh, yes. At the end of the day, it's like maybe I'm a little bit annoyed, but it's it's a compliment, you know. They came here to drink that beer that you made, so it, it's cool. And same thing with Toriana, that's another one. So you're always kind of trying to keep your staples on, your core beers, and still get new stuff out there. And it's, it's definitely been a challenge for us, you know, when we're doing new new beers, that means we you know, we might run out of a, a sun center. We might run out of something else, you know, mm -hmm. that time frame when it's off the board. But just challenge, you know, challenges. Every every brew house has got its challenges. Well, you guys know what you're doing. The beers are clean. Mm -hmm. They're crisp. They're flavorful and distinct and unique. Great job, man. Thanks yeah, a lot, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, all of these beers definitely tasted very, very different from each other. But yeah, that's funny. They're all really clean tasting. They're really yeah. good. Yeah. Like all these. How long have you guys been around now? Uh, so we've been open for about nine months. So we opened wow, okay. um, September 17th, 2016. Wow. You guys are yeah. killing it. This yeah. is delicious. Guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, we hope to pour more, pull more people into the tasting room. You know, that's, that's pretty much the only place you're going to find our beer right now until we do have the opportunity to grow a little bit more. So we're hoping, you know, word spreads and people come and see us in the tasting room and kind of follow us on our journey. Cool. Yeah, well, so if anybody likes in, good beer and soccer, right? yeah, go. Out, yeah. Well, or if we come in, are you gonna like take your shirt off and drop your pants? I don't know. I mean, how many beers are you gonna buy? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> come in, just bring a soccer ball, toss it to them, and you start dribbling with your feet. You know, these guys are actual soccer players. There you go. They won't catch it with their hands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate test, right? Exactly. John Barber and the co-owner, everyone, yeah. of Beers. Thunderhawk Elements. In Miramar, and uh, thanks for bringing along the beers today. Thanks Check them out at uh, 8675 Miralani Drive, and the website is thunderhawkbeer.com. That's thunderhawkbeer.com. That's right. Very convenient. You had it listed right there where I could see yes, it. Indeed. That's great. Thank you guys very much for having me on, and uh, just wanted to say we're our anniversary party, September 2nd. We're going to uh -oh. have a parking lot party. Um, the Routine Band is going to play there. So nice. if you guys are familiar with their music. Um, the lead singer happens to be my, my little brother, too, so we love those guys. <laughs> uh, but they'll be playing, so good music, good beer, good food. It should be an awesome event. So. And that's September the 2nd? September 2nd. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Cool. Awesome. All right.
Well, That's congratulations right on, the on, on, so much. on the launch of the nine months in so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. John everybody. Barber and everyone, and make sure you check out previous editions of Beer for Breakfast ABV and the radio edition of Beer for Breakfast at 91x.com. And we'll figure out a date for the uh, Tommy Howe Bruce Springsteen Karaoke Fest. That should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Paul's going to be singing first. Thanks again, John. Beer for yeah. Breakfast. Yeah. Thanks for visiting us at 91x.com. Yeah.